Hi guys, Dane here, and today it is time for the latest instalment in Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So today I'm going to be doing two reviews because I picked up two books this month. I'm also going to be revealing my next read. I guess I'll do that now in case people don't want to watch the whole video because it'll probably be kind of long. So next month, in the month of June, I'm going to be reading Our Doris by Charles Heathcote. And I encourage you to join in as well. I've heard good things about this book. I got my copy signed as well, which is very nice. And uh, yeah, I'm quite excited about reading Our Doris. So um, yeah, yeah. And lots of people on BookTube have actually reviewed this already. This is by Charles Heathcote, who has a BookTube slash AuthorTube channel that I recommend checking out. So there's that. In the meantime, we are going to look at reviews of these two books. So I guess we'll start with the review that I'm filming right now, because I read these at different times, obviously. And uh, yeah, so the first book I will be reviewing, there will be timestamps on the screen and below if you want to skip to a specific review. The first book is Robert Michael's The Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. And the second is The Vulnerable Gods by Todd Wittenmeyer. So Todd is Todd the Librarian. Ben Sanders is here on AuthorTube and BookTube as well. Okay, so Robert Michael's The Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. So I'm going to read the blurb to let us get started. So Robert Michaels has spent his entire life preparing to become an investigator like his father before him. The Watersburg Police Department grants his wish and he becomes the youngest investigator in recent history. When he catches his first case, he's ready to tackle anything that gets thrown his way. What starts out as a simple robbery develops into something unlike anything the small town of Watersburg, Maine has seen before. When the daughter of the local district attorney goes missing, Michaels is racing against the clock to find her. As the information before him begins to make less sense the more he learns, Michaels uncovers a terrible secret that has been plaguing his home for years, hiding just beneath the surface. He needs to figure out whether he's stumbling down a false trail, or what would be worse, that there may be some truth to an old legend. The legend of the Wendigo. I actually had forgotten by the time I went into this that there was going to be a Wendigo in it, so that was a nice surprise. I did like what Sanders did with the Wendigo, I thought it worked really well in the context of this story. I'm going to give a shout out to the cover design as well, which is one of the better, if not... Well, it's not the best, I don't think, but it's one of the better cover designs I've seen for an indie book. I would say top 10%. So, uh... Kudos there. The actual plot itself as well, I did enjoy. What is weird is that the plot of this isn't that dissimilar to the plot of this. Like, I would not recommend reading the two of these in the same month because they're similar enough that when I was reading this, I got echoes of Todd's book. Basically, in Todd's book, they're investigating some murders from a Neanderthal. And in Ben's book, they're investigating some murders by a Wendigo. But the actual way that they murder is very similar to the point at which when I was reading Todd's book I made a note because I was like huh it's a demon in the trees so and I'm sure this is totally accidental I don't think either of these authors have stolen from the other author or whatever but it's just weird that, that, that they were both so similar and uh, it was strange reading them both in the same month like I say I wouldn't recommend doing that I would space them out a little bit but I didn't know that that was going to be the case one of the problems that I did have with this book is that I mean, it has been edited, and I think you can tell it's been developmentally edited in terms of the plot and whatnot. But there were quite a lot of sort of spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes, like the wrong your and your, uh, things like that. I also, the layout is just, it's not, it's not distractingly weird, I guess, but it is a bit weird. So as you can see, there's spacing between the paragraphs. It's also not justified, both of which are kind of... I guess best practice. So one of the things that comes into it is that uh, they find the police find this uh, DSLR, and uh, Lynch, Lynch stared at me for a moment. Oh what? I think one of those really small vlogging cameras, the ones you see a ton of college age people using, recording everything they do like they're some kind of reality TV show. One of the characters in it is actually a vlogger as well, so you can kind of tell that Ben's been inspired by his own vlogging, I guess, to to include that in the book. There's a good line here. That's how life is though, isn't it? Once something becomes history, few people care to learn from it. Everything is all about the here and now. And then the policeman as well, he replies, I can't say I blame people really. I mean, I made my living studying history in a sense, only much more recent events. I'm an, in I'm an inspector with the local police department. And that's true, I've never thought about that, but that is what the police do. Am I in focus? 
Does anybody else who has facial hair have this problem that when I've got a slight beard, like it's not a massive beard, it's just a bit of a beard, and it throws my whole camera off and it really struggles to focus on my face? Here's one of the typos, so uh, it says, Dolores approached, food in hand. I'm sorry, the usual girl isn't her tonight, Mr. Michaels, but I think that she's got a thing for you. I think it meant here, although maybe the usual girl isn't her and she's him, I don't know. We have a lot of moments where this... The policeman's quite derpy, I think, as well. Like, for example, they find this DSLR and it's all battered up and stuff and he doesn't realise that you could just take the memory card out. And I was, all along, I was sitting there being like, why don't they just take the memory card out? Why don't they just take the memory card out? And then about 40 pages later, they just take the memory card out. I should point out, actually, while I think about it, another one of the problems that I had is that considering it's kind of a police procedural, there's only ever really one suspect and it turns out to be the person who did it. So it was kind of an anti-climax. Like they spend most of the book basically trying to get a warrant on this guy. And then they finally get a warrant and investigate. And yeah, he did do it. And you're just like, for me as well, I was just like, why aren't they tailing this guy and seeing like what he does and where he's going? Because if they tailed him, they would have figured it out. We also have this bit which kind of confused me about, basically the cop gets a bunch of emails, a bunch of spam emails. And so he just unplugs his computer, being like, oh, I didn't want it to get a virus or whatever. But you, you, you can't, not like that, you'd have to download an attachment from the email and run it for it to work, surely. And actually, as well, the problem, like, he acts as though unplugging his computer is going to stop the emails coming in. And it's like, well, no, they're still going to be sitting on the mailbox on the server. It's just that your computer is downloading them. But again, as long as you don't open and run any of the attachments... You be fine. Now don't get me wrong, I just, I get very particular about when technology is used in books because I'm quite techy, I suppose. I mean, from my freelance stuff, it's one of the things that I specialize in writing about and things like cyber security is, you know, I write a lot about cyber security, so I just sort of know a lot about how it works. But it, it's like when I read End of Watch by Stephen King and, and somebody DDoSed a website and somehow by doing that they changed the text that appeared and it's like, well, no, that's not how DDoSing works. Plus he got the name of it wrong. He didn't call it DDoSing, he called it something else. And, it, and so, you know, Stephen King gets these things wrong and he did say at the end in his afterword, he was like, I, I took a few liberties with the way that technology worked for the sake of the story and I'm like... That's fine, I guess, but it totally pulled me as a reader out of the story because I read it and was like, but that's not how it works. And then the tech guy actually bollocks the cop as well. He's like, I can't believe you. He says, uh, why did you think it would be a good idea to pull the power? I understand you wanted to stop whatever was going on to your machine, but you do realize that by killing the power, you could have just caused a more serious problem, especially since it was still processing incoming messages. I don't mean to come off like an ass right now, but I'll be honest and give you the worst case. If you're unfortunate enough, you could have corrupted some files that are important in the machine startup, and you could have turned it into a very expensive paperweight. That is unlikely, but I want you to know that it's still possible. Now that is correct, but even then it wouldn't turn it into a paperweight. I mean, you, can, you could run a repair and the data wouldn't necessarily be lost. You might lose some data. I like here though, he gets, uh, he gets given some beast energy, an energy drink. And he goes, what exactly is this? It's what I drink when coffee just won't cut it. That being said, don't drink more than one in a two day span. Shit will make your heart pop. Just figured you could use a bit of a boost. And then he's like, uh, thanks, but I think I'll wait a bit. And then when he does eventually open it, he drinks the whole thing without like even noticing he's doing it, which is very true to life, I think. Here's another mistake here. Uh, the car slammed forward as Sarah put her weight into the brake. You stupid son of... She blared on the horn. Who the hell cuts of a cop car? Fucking moron. So it should be off, but it says of. Having said that, I mean, mistakes like these are fairly common in indie books, but again, it's been professionally edited. So it's just a shame that it's then lets itself back down again with mistakes like that, if, if you know what I mean. I mean, and you can tell as well, a lot of these mistakes, uh, they're stuff you'd pick up if you read through it, but not if you ran a spell check. So... I, I just think it could have done with an extra layer of proofreading. Having said that, I did unfortunately find more mistakes in The Vulnerable Gods than in The Demon in the Trees, so there's that. But uh, anyway, I'm going to rate this now. I don't want to go all the way through and pick out all of my notes. It was fairly good. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I think I'd rec I would recommend this if you like things like mythological creatures, especially if you're interested in books about a Wendigo. I don't know if I'd recommend it to everybody, but again, if you like Ben and you like his channel, you can definitely see bits of him in the book. 
it was it was an okay read. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't terrible. I'm going to give it a low 3.5 out of 5, I think. All right, and on that note, let's move on to Pastain, who's going to talk to you about The Vulnerable Gods by Todd Wittenmeyer. Hi, guys. Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Vulnerable Gods by Todd Wittenmeyer. And Todd is Todd the Librarian here on BookTube. I don't know why I hesitated then. I couldn't remember his channel name. And uh, I'm going to read you the blurb. There's, there's a fair old bit on the back of it, so let me read this out. The unearthing of a 60,000-year-old Neanderthal skull brings visions of a brilliant mechanism to one man. But it opens a doorway from the past and unleashes an extinct species of hominid upon the unsuspecting residents of a small Kentucky town. Now the town's law enforcement and its terrified citizens must grapple with the time-travelling brute whose only goal is to exterminate the perceived gods that have entered his Ice Age world. The Vulnerable Gods is Todd Wittenmeyer's second novel. He's also the author of two other horror novels. How can he be the author of two other novels if this is his second novel? The Scrunger and the House of the Gods and, a, and an historical novel about life in a segregated coal town in 1912 entitled Grayson and the Coloured Rain. He is currently at work on another horror novel entitled The Strand Wolf, which will be released in the fall of 2010. Todd is a resident of Eastern Kentucky. He is married. He and his wife have three sons, a dog, a cat, a ferret, and whatever lurks in the dark foliage that surrounds their backwards home. And then it says at the bottom, By the way, his head and body aren't really that elongated. It's a stretched picture, folks. I hope you enjoyed the read. Get online and let me know something. Sincerely, folks, I appreciate your buying this book and taking the time to digest it. Without an audience, even the greatest or the most pathetic form of art is just a pile of unused atoms. And here is the famous stretchy head photo. As you can see, I've tabbed out a lot in this. Unfortunately... Most of the things that I've tabbed out are either spelling and grammar mistakes or layout mistakes. Now, I wrote in my review on this on Goodreads. It's, it's, it's a difficult one for me to rate because the story itself was actually really enjoyable. But there are so many just minor kind of copy editing mistakes and layout mistakes and whatnot that it doesn't feel like a finished book. So it just feels as though Todd's finished his first draft and then printed it, which I'm guessing is potentially what he did. But... um. I mean, things like, for example, we have the double spacing, which I know he already knew about. We have lots of places where there's just like random no page whatsoever, like this. Look, there's just a random empty page. And lots of things like apostrophes where there shouldn't be, and the wrong two and two, and your and your, and things like that. Which, unfortunately for me as a reader, really turns me off. So... It just didn't feel like a completed book, unfortunately. Let's go through these, because there are some bits that I did really enjoy as well. Right at the start, what I thought was funny is that there was a lot of like references to the killer in the trees. And um, basically this, this, this hominid. And um, it just made me laugh, because obviously next up I'm going to read uh, Ben Sanders' book, Robert Michael's Demon in the Trees. It just seemed really fitting. One thing I would say is that in a lot of places, there were far too many exclamation points. Like... Well, for example, this one line of dialogue. Yes! Now please get me some help! Gummy's neck's been broken! He's dead! He's fucking dead and I thought I saw the killer in the trees! I need help! Okay! Okay! I'm sending help! I'm sending help! I mean, I know I know that this is supposed to be like a, a situation in which, you know, t tensions are high and whatnot. But there, I still felt like there were too many because it... Wouldn't you have, like, more than two in a sentence or a paragraph or whatever? You... It, it dilutes the effect of the rest of them, you know. We also have the son who's just come back from, I think, serving in, in Iraq or Afghanistan. I mean, what I will say is this is definitely Todd's book. Like, as you read through it, you're like, yeah, I could see how that's, like, Todd. One of the characters even has a ponytail. And, like, just the, the way that they all act is very kind of Todd as well. And you can also see a Stephen King influence. I mean, the story itself, like I say, the story itself is pretty good. Some of them are things I think you would catch if you ran a spell check as well. Like, not even having a second pair of eyes, which you do... Like, I maintain you do very much need a second pair of eyes on... Especially on indie books, you need an editor, otherwise it's just not going to work. So there's a wrong use of it's there. There's an apostrophe where there shouldn't be one. Here is a very Todd line, though. He said, um... What did you say you were going to major in this fall? Was it proctology? Brian shook his head. No computer science, Dad. That's because there's no punctuation there, which there should be. He replied as he tried not to grin. It's closely related to proctology, though. Greg propped his chin on his fist and feigned interest. Oh, really? How so? Well, they both involve your fingers, Brian said as he tried to think fast. And if you don't have enough RAM, your patient will crash. Here we have page 27. He says, I think you're just trying to get out of this one because you know I'm going to win. I'll try and show you. It's the wrong your... 
Uh, I don't know if you can see where that is. I'll check in editing, but... Yeah, it's the wrong yaw and just stuff like that really, really grates on me. I mean, I'm vaguely OCD as well, but I'm sorry, Todd. I don't mean to be bad-mouthing your book and stuff, but it, it needs copy editing, like, pretty badly, I would say. I mean, I don't know. I personally, if this was my book, I wouldn't consider it complete. So I just think that's worth bearing in mind. I think I think if you were to copy edit this, fix the dodgy layout and the double spacing and stuff, you'd have a pretty good book. The problem is, is just that the mistakes, every time there is a mistake, it drags you out of the book. I do like this, but the police are talking about this sighting of this, this monster. Oscar Redner looked at Otis and waited for the police chief to nod. What did the guy look like? He was really scary looking, Gary said immediately. Scary looking, Oscar said as he shook his head. Otis, you need to train your nephew how to use adjectives. That needed a comma. Otis felt his blood pressure rising and he started to stand up. But Gary spoke quickly. In fact, he stood up and began to speak loudly. We have chapter six. Chapter six started in a really weird moment. I think, I think it's probably done to try and build tension. But it basically, chapter five ends in the middle of a conversation. And then chapter six starts and just carries on that conversation. And for me, I don't think that really works as a chapter break. Because it's not, it's not even a scene break, you know, it would be continuous. I mean, that's one of the things that my editor has actually pulled me up on. She's like, you can't have a scene break here when it's the same scene. There's no break. So it just seems weird to have a chapter break there as well. I have another random blank page. We've got here, it says, uh, He got out slowly and looked up at the mayor's window, which was to the right of the windows in the station. He drew in a deep breath and then started the long walk. And I can't help but wonder whether that's a Stephen King reference. We have this bit here, which might just be dialect, I guess. He's talking about something he says, They wanted to buy them, but I told them that they weren't for sell. And I don't know whether that's an Americanism, maybe. Don't get me wrong, a lot of this stuff is like par for the course for indie books, but it just seemed like there were a lot, like they, it was noticeable how many mistakes there were in this. And actually on Goodreads, somebody else had picked up on it as well. We have the woman in this, which says something which uh, at least no woman in my life has ever said. I just, I, I can't imagine anybody saying it. It's too cringy. It, re it reads like a line of dialogue from a nice nin. Nothing relaxes me more than some of that tongue. <laughs> so, I mean, as you can probably tell, that there are positives and negatives to this, really. I don't know. I'm going to have to be harsh in my rating on this one. I'm going to give it a three out of five. I, it was, it was okay. Like I said, if, if all the errors had been fixed, I mean, there's even one in the blurb on, on the back page of the book so if all the errors had been fixed and the layout had been sorted and everything it probably would have been a four out of five but i just found it hard to overlook the mistakes uh, it, it just it bugs me and also as an indie writer myself i mean this this is what people think of when they think of indie books like they they think that indie books are going to be full of mistakes and they're going to be poorly laid out and you know this and that and and i'm trying to kind of fight against that so it, it does bother me when i see an indie book that kind of adheres to that cliche, you know. So, I couldn't recommend this in its current state just because of how many typos and whatnot there is. It, it just really needs copy editing. I'm really sorry, Todd. Like, I don't know. I, I, we've had this conversation on my channel before where I, I talk about how I try and be as honest as possible with the books that I read. And so, that's what I'm trying to do now, you know. And from one writer to another and from one booktuber to another and from a friend to another friend... Get yourself a copy editor and a layout person. I mean, I know that stuff costs money, but personally, from my point of view, I, w I would rather put out a good book than a bad book, if that makes sense. And while this isn't a bad book, it's not ready. You know, it's 80% of the way there, but it's that, that final 20% hasn't been completed, and you can tell, and the book suffers for it. And because of that, I, I just can't recommend it, unfortunately. Yeah, we had pages like this, where it has a line of dialogue or paragraph or whatever above it and then the page number is so strange so strange so i mean i know that todd's aware of a lot of these issues as well i just think why not fix them so anyway thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit that like button let me know in the comments if you've read either of these books and if so what you thought of them let me know if you've read our doris as well but no spoilers please hit subscribe for more and i'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye